to get volume, so we cut into tiny little rectangles and got little volumes that way. So our second way is we are going to subdivide, but we're only going to subdivide in one axis. So we're going to, instead of make tiny little cubes or rectangles, we're going to make slices, so super thin slices. Of course, you can cut it the other direction instead. I just chose to cut it this direction. So we started to measure some of these. We have delta x is the width, which of course that's the part we're going to send to zero in the limit. Now, this right here, the height depends on where we are here. So the height is not uniform. So what we're going to have to do is figure out Actually, we're going to be lazy and say t of, so our, our cross-section area So our cross-section area is going to depend on what x value that we're looking at. So each cross-section is going to have a different value. And we're going to say it's just t of x. I don't know why they went with x, or why they went with t. So t is a cross-sectional area. We're going to have to find a different function for t depending on what our actual function looks like above. So this function right here, I didn't really take one in particular. I just drew some surface over top of this. Usually they'll have a much nicer area. So they'll be, what are some nice examples? Uh, let's pretend I can draw. So it'll be like a half circle over top or a triangle over top or a rectangle tangle over top, something relatively nice. Uh, so this will be the cross-section area. So how do we get the total area? We're going to, we're not total, total volume, wow. So cross-section area is Tx, so the volume of a cross-section So if you know the area of the side right here, the cross-section area, you just multiply it by the width. And that'll give you the volume. So our volume is the area of the side, the cross-section, multiplied by the thickness of your piece of toast. So if you know the area of the side, you just multiply it by however thick your toast is, you got the volume. So total volume. We have to add up all these. We're just going to throw it into an integral. So it's going to be the area of the cross section. The delta x turns into dx. And you just need to figure out your uh, beginning and ending x values. I want to use the same letters. I think we did a and b before. So we had our small was a, and the big was b. So it's going to be integral. A to B. So there's another way to write total volume, and this was cross sections that were parallel to the y axis. Actually, let's go cutting perpendicular to the x axis. So why is this an x integral? If you look at our cross sections, when we want to add the cross sections, we have to move in the x direction. So we start at some small value of x and then move over to a large value of x. So that's why this is a dx integral. In Calc 2, I talked about squeegeeing a window. So that sort of applies here, except your squeege if you want to think about squeegeeing a volume, your squeegee is now two-dimensional. So it's a very large plane, and you're going 
going to squeegee through the whole region. All right, kind of like a scanner or something like that. some three-dimensional scanner, like an MRI or something like that. It scans through the whole object or the whole volume. So in this case, it's starting, I should say, starting the left and then going to the right. So you're changing your x coordinate as you do that. So I could, of course, cut it up the other way. So we go front to back or back to front. So if we <coughs> use a plane to cut it that way, I'm not going to draw the whole shape out, but we'll just cut the base up like this. And this is on the y axis. And I think we use C and D for two values for y. So if your cross sections are perpendicular to the y-axis, are, they use the letter S for this, but our surface area of the slice as S of Y. So of course sitting on top of any one of these slices is some shape and if you get the surface area we'll call that S of Y. So our volume of a slice S Y time, and delta Y is the measurement of how thick a slice is. So we get S Y times delta Y. So our total volume Integral c to d, s of y, dy. So there are the two forms you could have for slicing instead of cutting it up into small rectangles. So now you should be asking the question, where do s of y and t of x come from? He just wrote them down and said there are some functions that tell you this stuff. So where in the world do these things come from? We'll do S of Y first. It's right here on the screen. So S of Y, I want to know the, what is that, the surface area. So, well, let's redraw this. So I want to know the surface area of this slice right here. So I just took this base right here. There is a base on it. I really just want the surface area, so I don't really care so much about the base right now. I just want the draw a better base than that. So there is a whole sort of back part to this, which I'll draw. So I'm just talking about the surface area, the front side of this, the area of the front side. So we fixed a y coordinate. So this is on the y axis. And we'll call that y coordinate y. All right, we have a function that determines the height everywhere over here. Unfortunately, that function, the height function, 8x's and y's. So that height function, 8x's and y's. We're going to pick a y and fix it. So whatever y we have right here is not going to change for this slice change a y, you're talking about a different slice. So this y is fixed. How do I get the area of this shape right here? So I could draw a copy of the x-axis right here. 
We're going from A to B. You know the answer to this question. So we're going to integrate. The question is, what are we going to integrate? All right, maybe an easier question. What direction are we going to integrate? What axis are we going to integrate across? We're finding the surface area. So we're going on the x-axis. So this is going to be a dx here. And we're going from A to B. That's minimum x, maximum x. All right, the only question is, what's the height? I don't want to say y value, because y is an input now. But I'm going to use the word height. F of x, y. That seems a little strange. But our y is not changing. So whatever y you're thinking about right here for this picture, that's the same y that you're going to keep plugging in over here on the right side. So this y is fixed. Oh, nice. Pointing at the comma, that y is fixed. So that's exactly where your t function comes from. For the height equals f of x, y, would that be given? Yeah, so that's, that was our initial somewhere <coughs> up here. So we had a region and a surface over top. So we're all, everything we're doing is based off a square region with, with this surface over top of it. So we have our, our f of x is the height above any point here. Uh, we're assuming it's positive. If it's negative, you'll just get a negative volume right there. Okay, so that is the somewhere. That's the s of y function. If you knew your height function, you can figure out your s of y, your slice area function right here. So of course, we're going to do the other slice surface area. So think about this, see if you can write it down. It's not that different. Just think about what's actually changing. So I wrote everything that doesn't have an X or a Y in it. So we're doing our slices the other direction. So I'll scroll up for a second. So now we're slicing on the x-axis. So our slices look like this. And I want to get the area of, let's say, the right side here. So I want to get the side, this area here on the right. It's possible to really draw that. But you're fixing an x-coordinate, and your y-coordinate is going to change. So is a dy integral right there. So the same x, y. And what is our endpoints going to be? C to d. C to d. All right, so now, as long as you have a height function, you can get the cross-section area function right off of that. So somewhere I said how to throw the s of y function together to get a volume. So let's take these two functions and get the volumes off of them. So these are both surface area, depending on which way you slice it. So we're going to compute the volume. So the f most recent one we wrote down, integral c to d, s y, dy. So I'm copying down the total volume at the top of the screen right there. So we add up or integrate all the slices. All I'm going to do is take s of y right here and drop it in for s of y. So I'm going to take our definition of s of y, and I'll do that in blue so it looks different. So we get integral c to d. And now, instead of s of y, I'm putting in integral a to b 
fxy dx. So that's s of y. And then copying over the last part, there's a dy at the end. So everything in blue is s of y. So all that was was substitution right there. So from before, when we sliced it the other direction, we got integral a to b tx dx. And we're going to do the same thing. We're going to write the alternative tx, so the integral version of tx. And I'll do that again in blue. So it's integral c to d fx y dy. And then copy down dx at the end. Now volume better equal volume. So these two are going to be the same. So when I say either order, these are the two orders, dx dy or dy dx. Same thing. Guess we're done. Yes. So this is the uh, Fubini's theorem. So there is Fubini's theorem. And in Fubini's theorem, you'll see dA is either dx dy or dy dx. It can go either way. There are conditions where it doesn't work, but there are not nice conditions where it doesn't work. So if I give you a nice function, this will work. Weird things like horizontal or vertical asymptotes where something goes off to infinity, that's a different story. So if there's any infinity stuff going on, we didn't account for any of that here. So we assumed our height function was finite, and we're over a rectangle.